Okay, quadratic equation solved. And which equation are we going to solve? This equation right here. So I'm going to um, solve this equation. And there's different ways you can uh, solve quadratic equations. Uh, I'm going to discuss that with you. Really kind of talk um, about the things that you need to understand about quadratic equations. Um, but I always like to um, suggest to my uh, uh, students or those who watch my videos to pause the video, see if you can do the problem on your own, if you think you can, and then see how I approach it. But uh, before we start, I just want to let you know, um, I do a ton of videos on, on mathematics on my channel. Um, so I hope you consider uh, being a subscriber. And if you like my teaching style and you want to uh, take my full comprehensive, complete math courses, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. You can check out my uh, Tablet Class uh, Academy. So with that being said, let's get into this uh, problem and solve this specific quadratic equation. All right, so as I promised, I'm gonna um, give you a little bit, I'm gonna actually solve this obviously, but I'm gonna give you some helpful information um, uh, so you can really strengthen your understanding about quadratic equations in general. So first of all, what if I just said solve this equation? Would you even know this is a quadratic equation, right? So the thing is this, you have to be able to identify an equation as, as a certain type of equation because if you're like, well, I don't know what type of equation this is, but you learned about quadratic equations and you have all these techniques to solve, but you're not sure this is in fact a quadratic equation, then you're gonna be lost, right? So how do we know that this is a quadratic equation? Well, it's a polynomial. And all that means, and I'm speaking in general terms here, that we have x variables, right? Or it could be any other variable, y, z, doesn't make a difference, but you have a variable, okay? And the highest power of the variable is two. Okay, so in this case, we have an x squared, and then we have an x, okay? So the highest power of the variable is two. And all the variables have to be whole numbers. In other words, um, they can't have negatives in them or decimals or fractions in terms of the powers, okay? So this is a quadratic equation. Now, one thing that you need to know, and this is really fundamental to quadratic equations in general, is this. When you have a polynomial, its highest power, okay, highest exponent, they call them, there's other terms for it, the degree of the polynomial, just a little bit of uh, math terminology here, but the highest power, okay, in this case it's two, that's what defines a quadratic equation, uh, the a polynomial to the highest power of two or degree two, that means that this is gonna have two solutions, okay? So if you're, you know, doing this problem and you have like, and you just rush through and you say X is equal to seven, well, even if that is right, uh, that is still only half of, of the answer because there are always two solutions um, in quadratic equations. Now, one of the ways we describe those two specific solutions, um, pretty frequent common ways to say x1 and x2. Little, these are called subscripts, okay? So this defines that we're talking specifically about two solutions. So before we even get going in this problem, I know in advance, hey, I'm dealing with the quadratic equation, right? I know there's gonna be two solutions. So with that being said, we can then, you know, take the next step forward to solve this, uh, uh, this guy. All right. Now, okay. What's next? Well, now that you know that this is a quadratic equation, then we need to kind of think about how to approach solving this. Okay. Now, generally speaking, when we're solving quadratic equations, we really like to set the entire equation equal to zero. So in this case, this is a pretty nice easy problem because it's already set equal to zero, okay? Sometimes you don't have to do that. Let me give you a quick example. If I have x squared is equal to four, this is a very basic quadratic equation and I'm, it doesn't make any sense for me to, uh, to set this equal to zero because I can solve this directly. So my point here is that once we have a quadratic equation, we have different techniques to solve quadratic equations. And it really depends on the uh, specific equation you're dealing with, okay? So here I'm gonna just kinda abbreviate some of the techniques that you need to solve, okay? Or need to know to solve quadratic equations. Uh, the first is to be able to take the square root of both sides. 
that would be an example for this particular um, problem. So I'm going to stop myself again. I'm not, I don't want to go off in too far on a tangent and explain everything about quadratic equations. I have examples on all this stuff on my, on my channel and in course in my full course. But I just want you to know that this is a technique that we can apply on some prompts. Not in this specific prompt, in this one, yes. So you need to have these different tools and know which one you can apply it. Okay, and this is important because I'm going to solve this equation. I need to know which technique I'm going to use, which tool I'm going to bring, you know, to to the job. Okay, so one of the tools I have is solving uh, by taking the square root of both sides. All right, the next is factoring, which is a great tool. Okay, if we can factor. The next is the quadratic formula, and then we have this uh, something else called completing the square. Okay, so. The completing the square, if you're, if you're not familiar with this, it's, it's simply the long version of the quadratic formula, okay? And that's uh, extremely important when you're dealing with quadratic equations. But by far, the most direct way to solve quadratic equations is if we can take the square root of both sides. I mean, that's like an awesome way. You can just approach it, finish the problem real quick. If you can't do that, then we're going to look to see if we can factor um, the polynomial. And if we can't factor, we can't take the square root of both sides, then we have to result by uh, by using a quadratic formula, which is a whole lesson and uh, skill in and of itself. Okay. Now, this thing right over here, the completing the square is simply kind of, uh, oh, most students don't like learning completing the square, but it's completing the square, excuse me. But it's the long version to, to uh, that um, of, of basically the quadratic formula. But once you learn this in class, you'll never really apply it in terms of, of actually solving quadratic equations, okay? These guys here though, for sure, okay? So, so these are some of the uh, like frame of reference that you need to have, mentally speaking, as a math student, to say, okay, I got this quadratic equation. Now you'll be able to uh, better appreciate what I'm gonna do in terms of solving it, okay? So, as I said, I can't take the square root of both sides here, okay? This is not that situation. I'm not going to get too much into that. You might want to ch check out some of the videos I have on my, my channel. But this is not a, a situation where I can take the square root of both sides. However, I need to see if I can factor this trinomial. If I can factor it, in other words, if I can factor it into two binomials, if I set it equal to zero, that would be really like, uh, advantageous. Okay, it would be like, okay, awesome. I could do that. It's going to save me work because the quadratic formula, quite frankly, is takes the most steps, and it's the generally speaking, it's the most opportunities for students to make mistakes. Okay, so if we don't have to do the quadratic formula. Let's not do it. So if you, by the way, if you pause this video <clears throat> and you did the quadratic formula, you're going to see if your answers are right here in a second. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now that this guy here is factorable. Okay, you can factor. So when you're dealing with quadratic equations, you need to know how to factor polynomials. You need to know how to deal with the greatest common factor. You need to know how to deal with uh, factoring trinomials and special case, like difference of two squared, all that kind of good stuff. So if you're weak in factoring, you're going to be weak in, in uh, dealing with quadratic equations. Okay. Now, one thing here you want to notice that this is written in standard form and it's set equal to zero. In other words, I have the highest power, the x squared here, the x, and the number. It's in, in decreasing order, okay? So that's good. Now, I'm, I can turn this video into sub-lessons upon sub-lessons upon sub-lessons. I don't want to do that, okay? Um, again, I'm going to refer you uh, to uh, some of the other videos on my channel. So just know that this guy here is factorable. So if you want to pause the video and see if you can factor it, that would be a nice little pop quiz for you. But basically, this is factorable uh, into these two binomials, 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. Okay, And if you weren't sure, if you're like, well, I think these are the factors, you can always multiply using the FOIL method to see if you get back to your original answer. So let's just do that real quick. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. 1 
times 3x is 3x, and then 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So when I simplify this, I get 6x squared minus x minus 1x or minus x minus 2, and that's what I have right here, okay? So indeed, these two guys, these two binomials are the factors of that trinomial, okay? All right, so I got a lot of scribbly scratch here going on. Let me go ahead and just erase this, and we'll get back to this problem. If you Now, if you're able to uh, factor this, if you got to this point, then that's excellent, okay? So you're doing very good. All right, now let's clean this up so we can just concentrate. Okay, so identify this as a quadratic equation. I said, okay, this is definitely a quadratic equation. I know there's two answers. Uh, I know I can't take the square root of both sides. Again, a separate video on that. Uh, so let me see if I can factor it. Yes, I can factor it. So here are the factors. And now let's talk about what we do with these factors, okay? If you notice, a factor is something being multiplied by something else. Okay, I have this guy being multiplied. Let's use an old-fashioned uh, division operator, x, right? Being multiplied by something else. So if I told you I have something times something else and it's equal to zero. Okay, let's say I gave you, um, you know, just told you, I said, uh, hey, Bill, I got two numbers, okay? And when I'm multiplying together, the answer is zero, okay? And so you, I would say, do you have any idea what those numbers could be? So I think about the question. If I have two numbers and I multiply them together and the answer is zero, what does that tell me about one or both of these numbers? Well, it should tell you that one or both of those numbers actually has to be zero itself, right? You can't get an answer of zero unless one or both of those numbers are actually equal to zero, okay? So that's something called the zero product uh, property, and we're going to use that in this uh, situation. So this binomial being multiplied by this binomial is equal to zero. So the only way that can happen is if 2x plus 1 is equal to zero, and or 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So this is how we solve quadratic equations when we have the factors, okay? So we have this trinomial. We have factored into two binomials. We set each in equal to 0, okay? And that was because of the zero product property. Now we're going to solve for x in each one of these little equations. So I'm going to move the 1 over here. I get 2x is equal to negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 half. So that's my first solution, okay? Again, if you don't know what I did here, solving these basic equations, and you're going to have to go back and review. Got a lot of videos on that. Don't worry, but when you're at the quadratic equation level in math, you know, uh, your teacher you know, is expecting you to have you know, a certain level of uh, skills, prerequisites, if you will, to handle this stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this equation. I'm going to get 3x is equal to 2. So x is going to be equal to 2 thirds, and that is my second solution. So there you go, okay? Remember I, I said I'm looking for two solutions, two uh, um, different solutions is typically what you're going to find. <clears throat> but when you study quadratic equations, sometimes you can have the same number twice. In other words, you can have x is equal to x1 is equal to, let's say, 5. And your second solution can also be the same number, 5. That's called a double root. So that's, again, a separate uh, situation. Quadratic equations are very um, extremely important in your study of algebra, whether you're at the pre-algebra level. Uh, typically, you really get heavy duty into this at the algebra 1 level, and then it just becomes continued importance. Algebra 2, pre-calculus, even into like... Um, you know, calculus level, but this is really a, the theory of polynomials, which are hugely important in mathematics. So it's just a step-by-step -step build up of your knowledge and skills. But this was a nice, I thought, a uh, nice, direct, simple problem for us to kind of uh, look at and you know, review big picture concepts of quadratic equations and skills. Of course, you know, if you, if you um, need help on any of these things that I was doing, Check out my uh, my channel. I have literally hundreds of videos that I think uh, you'll find helpful. So let's wrap this up. Again, I hope you become a subscriber. And if you do, make sure you hit that bell notification so you get my latest videos. And if you enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, leave me some feedback. It lets me know how I'm doing. 
how I can improve and, you know, gives me ideas on on uh, future videos that I might make. Um, I get a lot of uh, uh, comments and whatnot, which I'm definitely grateful for. Um, can't respond to most of them, but I do try to read uh, most of them. And, and like I said, it's uh, definitely appreciated. But with that being said, I appreciate your time and have a great day.